YouTube, so today I'll be making an overview of the best Mac App Stores, Mac App Store apps to have for any new MacBook Pro or MacBook Air user. So uh, just to start off this video, I want to let you guys know that this depends on what you guys will be doing on the computer, but generally I'll tell you guys my personal opinion. So starting off, I'll start off with Pixelmator, which is an excellent Photoshop application. Uh, this application allows you to create different media, it's essentially Adobe Photoshop, but significantly cheaper and easier to use. Continuing off, I'd say Pages is a must-have application. It comes with a lot of templates, and it's very customizable. This is the older version of Pages, as I dislike the new version. But it essentially gives you a variety of different types of, um, of um, templates to choose from, and it's a very powerful word processing unit that is retina-optimized, for those of you with new Retina MacBook Pros. So continuing off, I'll say ScreenFlow is a must-have application if you're going to be making screen recordings. I personally make screen recordings often, so I find screen recording to be a very useful application for that. Continuing on, I'd say Disk Doctor is a must-have application for any SSD user because it essentially analyzes your disk and it finds space that you can free up and it says current free space 18.4 gigs and mounted to free 745 megabytes. So this will really assist in clearing up some of that space that you have. So, uh, continuing on, another must-have application for any MacBook Pro user would probably be Handbrake if you're handling with videos. This application allows you to cut down on the size of videos by just importing them, and it converts it to an MP4 file or anything else you'd want to use it for. You can also rip DVDs with this, it's just a very advanced and powerful free tool. Now, you might not find this in the Mac App Store, but it's certainly a must-have. Continuing on, Coconut Battery is another must-have. Essentially, it tells you information regarding your battery. So this would include design capacity, maximum charge, battery load cycles, battery temperature, etc. And here you can see as my battery health goes lower and lower and lower. Continuing on with the rest of my applications, I would say another must-have is GFX card status. For those of you who have different graphics cards, this essentially allows you to change uh, the current graphics card that you're using on your computer. So it currently says I'm using the NVIDIA GT Force, but if I want, I can switch it over to integrate it only. So this will uh, save more battery life by using Intel HD 4000 graphics. Uh, next up would be CPU LED. Now this isn't really mandatory, but it gives you this nice CPU usage here, so you can tell when your CPU is being used up by other applications. Next up would be self-control. Self-control essentially disables a certain amount of websites, so when you're concentrating, you won't be distracted by Facebook or YouTube. It's useful for students when you're studying. Um, next up, I would say, would be Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. It essentially tells you a benchmark of how fast your disk is. So I find this sometimes to be accurate. Sometimes it's not too accurate, but it depends. I guess just casually using it. It's not really a must-have, but I guess it's a very nice application. So continuing on, let's see what apps I have around here. Geek Tool, I don't use it that much, but it essentially allows you to put your time and stuff on your wallpaper. It's very nice. Audacity is an excellent audio editing tool, which allows you to edit different audio files, adjust it, make recordings. It's very powerful. However, it's not red dot optimized. Continuing on, furthermore. Uh, we would have Text Wrangler, which is just a programming editor that might not apply to most people. CC Cleaner, again, it clears up your disk space, but it's not it's not supported by OS X Mavericks, so that might affect some. Google SketchUp is more of a designing software, so it allows you to design houses, buildings, and any other object you can think of. Monolingual essentially allows you to delete some of the languages on your computer and never removes them, so that could be very useful to some. Uh, next up would be would be um, um, Autodesk Sketchbook Pro. So essentially, this application allows you to create different designs. It's similar to Pixelmator, but this would be mostly for those with sketch pads, and it's just very useful for those as well. Continuing on, uh, we would have we would have. Uh, this application which essentially allows it to analyze your disk space and look for clutters of space. So what this does is it provides a visual representation of your solid state or hard drive and it allows you to quickly see what files are taking up your space. So usually it takes a little bit of time to load up, but it's a very, very useful application for SSD users.
So currently it's loading off our content, so in the meantime I'll be going over some other applications. Dropbox is an online cloud storage website which may be useful to many different people. AutoCAD WS is essentially a mapping service for Mac OS X. This again may be useful to some individuals, depends on what you're going into. Xcode again is another free application that allows you to code in Objective-C. Again, depends on the person. Keynote and Numbers are essentially Apple's versions of PowerPoint and Excel respectively. I find those to be very useful if you're interested in that. And yeah, so hopefully this doctor, um, this conventory X, I'm sorry, will load quickly. Uh, color Strokes essentially takes an image and it allows you to take it and analyze it in black and white and then you can change the colors of it. So um, here I have a cat in a basket and I go over and then it adds color to it. So it's a very powerful tool if you're, if you're using this imaging frequently. I believe it costs one dollar in the Mac App Store, so it's a very nice application. So here you can see visually what's taking up space, so Dirt 2, Civilization, AutoCAD, iPhoto, Unity, Perl Desktop, Real Racing, etc. So those are some applications, and if I want to delete this, you click Move to Trash, and it says I do not have specific privileges to do that. So then I manually have to go into Applications and delete that application respectively. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like this video if it assists you. Please comment below if I talk too fast or something similar. Thanks for watching.